In this video, I'm going to be collecting the Knight V, or Knight 5, if you prefer saying it that way, and replacing a hang glider that mysteriously disappeared or despawned after I got back from the shovel cave. It was a, it was a bit of a bummer. Actually, as soon as I finished uploading my previous video, there was the update with the Knight V and uh, a few other things. One of them was making the enemies just a little bit bigger of assholes. That's fine though. I had my shotgun. I did run to the original place where the first hang glider I got had spawned in. It had not returned, so I was going to have to make two trips. One for the Night V and one for a new hang glider. I was really rather enjoying the shotgun. I think it was a little too early for me to start thinking about conserving ammunition because I was enjoying myself so much, but I should have been thinking about it. This guy's fine. He'll be fine. The big cove where the pistol raft is located is where I took my first uh, left into the woods. I followed that uh, right-hand waterfall for a little ways and then I switched from the right stream to the left stream. this That uh, uh, blocky looking cliff is a good landmark. And then once I found the waterfalls, I eventually, it took me a minute, but eventually found the Night V. And solar panels. Apparently you can just find them randomly in uh, consumable chests. I was keen to figure out how this thing steered I had heard uh, Farkett say a few things about it being a bit tricksy, and it was. I, I got stuck on the uh, the odd rock or, or tree. Not really great for in the forest, but if you can get out into the open, it moves pretty friggin' well. After playing with it for a few minutes, I realized speed is really everything with the Night V. There can be any kind of obstacle in your path, nearly vertical, but if, if you slow down, you can feather your throttle over things. It started getting real dark as I was nearing home. And it was amazing just to watch the, the darkness just drop. And then I couldn't see Jack. Got out my lighter and all of a sudden there were jerks. Which I had no intention of dealing with because it was all... I was doing all of this before work and I wanted to get the hang glider so I'd have that to play with when I got back home. The very next morning, these jerks showed up. First thing, absolutely phenomenal. So aggressive. I have no... It must have been in the patch because this happened pretty much every night or every other night I've spent in the game since the last patch. I spent a little while Getting to understand the Night V, took it around, and ended up not getting the hang glider just yet. So when I reloaded after work, went out with my Night V, and these guys were back again. But a tequila and weed infused idea hit me. Could I use shotguns and weapons on the Night V? And it turns out the answer is yes, I can. It can be a bit awkward uh, turning slowly near these mutants, so I think in the future I'm probably going to try just employing drive-bys. I really was becoming uncomfortable with how much of my logging infrastructure, even right on the coastline, it was becoming very susceptible to mutant attack. I also wonder too if it might be something to do with me having the shotgun and several mid-game items such as the zip line and the what's that the shovel. Here is a map I found on Google Images. There are about 14 or 15 different hang gliders to be found throughout the forest uh, map area. I will be going from my base along the coast past the first area where I found the, the original hang glider to the second one. There's a little cove that I hope will be easy to spot and uh, hopefully with any luck I'll never have to find another hang glider again. Quick double check for no more enemies and then I am on my way and I fall. 
the night bee really does open up possibilities for coastline scavenging though and the more I clear of the forest around my base the easier it's going to be to use in those areas as well and I'll be able to scavenge a ton very very quickly which is good because they are I think making the enemies just a little bit more difficult after consulting the map quite a bit I believed this was the spot and I was just going to have to kind of Skyrim climb my way up it wasn't right at the top here, but it was worth coming this way because at the top there was this really, really neat rock I found. Precariously perched, but it doesn't fall down. Pretty neat. I was into it. I found the hang glider eventually. It took me probably about 10 minutes of just kind of looking around. I intended to jump off the cliff here and fly over to the Night V. That, however, did not happen, and I was a bit afraid that I had made the damn thing despawn. Uh, after looking a bit, I did spot it, I think, on the ground, creeping down the cliff a little bit before I plunged down, just in case. Oh, there it is, yep. So I cautiously make my way down the cliff and humbly pick it up off of the beach and carry it to the night V where I'm hoping I'll be able to carry this thing on my back while rolling with the Night V. It was getting toward the end of a long day for me, and I really was hoping that this would work. And it did quite, quite easily. I was trying to remember that I have to left-click to make the Night V work, but made my way right across these guys. Just look at them, a bunch of puffies out of nowhere. I sped this footage up just to show that it goes pretty quick and uh, no incidents up until the very end here. One little rock did, did me, but not too bad and I was able to get back without having used my entire day on the trip, which left me plenty of time for building. Now, jumping off of the tower was working wonderfully, but I wondered if there wasn't a way to make it just a little bit faster. So I worked out this situation where I was able to zip line myself and logs up near the top of the tower. Not the exact top, that was too far. But I had to take the weapons back from Virginia also. She was okay with it, so I, that was nice. Um, before I started this portion of my gameplay, I had actually died because of not having weapons that I, I needed. It was a, one of those human centipede floppy fellows. And it kind of made me think maybe I should do a little work on my defenses. I'm not entirely certain what I'm going to end up doing. But I decided to start with working on uh, uh, the palisade, or not palisade, what are they? Just the pikes, the pike wall that I have. But I didn't want to be bothered with spending 30 minutes collecting large stones, so I was hoping that Kelvin would do it. And not only did he do it, he also finished the rock collectors, the new ones since the old ones had been destroyed by mutants. He finished the rock collectors, and then he filled the rock collectors. 10 out of 10 for Kelvin in this video. He did great. It's the most useful he's been in weeks. I started being a little bit concerned with how much I was using the shotgun. I switched over to the uh, buckshot and was killed this guy, even though I only kind of winged him twice. There was an update to how often enemies will be able to dodge heavy attacks, which is my main attack for much of what I've done so far in my playthrough. And they are, uh, they're, they're even more dodgy than they were before. Not impossible, it's really just going to be a matter of watching what they do and uh, adjusting my battle dance strategy. But I get frustrated pretty quickly, so at least I'll have my weapons for now. Hopefully, I'll be able to collect a lot more bullets in the near future. 
After that one, I thought I was alone, and this fella snuck up on me. And he apparently brought a friend. So I was gonna have to... Oh, Kelvin! Every time I watch that, he came so close to dying. These interlopers will have to pay for their treachery. I thought about using the machete to kill this runner, but I hadn't really used the pistol too much yet, and I had way more ammo in that than I did the shotgun. Almost 200 rounds, I think. I've never been a great shot with pistols. It's going to require some practice. I decided not to waste too many bullets on this guy, but trying to fight him with just my uh, modern axe, it was it took a it took about like five minutes. Then I wanted to see if hobbled, I could take him down with a spear. It wasn't a great shot, but you know, live and learn. Get my spear back. Building was coming along really well. I was using the zip line uh, for the ups and downs, but my infrastructure, as I think I said, it was becoming a constant target. These guys were showing up way more often. Mutants started becoming way more consistent, and I don't know if that's because of where I'm at in the game, or if it's update related. It's not too bad though, Pl I have plenty of ammunition. At the end of the day I can always take them out if I have to bring them close to the shore to range them with a bow. And I keep getting tons of creepy armor. It's been pretty good to me, as I have used it to try and learn how to melee the uh, fingers down. And the armor racks work now. So this is Jeff and Richard. They are my uh, bedroom pals. They just chill there and look real creepy. Super useful. I planned on spending most of the next day just building. I wasn't entirely out of logs yet but there was definitely some holders I could fill. So I headed back up to the cliff and started cutting down some trees. I was under no impression that the cannibals or mutants would leave me alone though. They had been far too consistent to do that. But they still managed to sneak up on me. Minding my own business. Chopping down trees. This one was a weird one. It uh, starts to fall and then it's caught on something. It's kind of weird. I liked it. But yeah, mind of my business. Uh, not even a sound. I just had thrown some logs on the zip line, turned around, grabbed another one or two. Or is there movement over there? Yeah, there's a little movement, so I knew it wasn't alone. I knew there was danger. Turn around, and there's a herd of them. Almost hit one. Almost hit it with a log. I think my plan was to try and thin them out a little bit with the pistol and then take them out with uh, melee weapons, but as soon as I killed one, the others had sort of disappeared, so uh, searching around with my pistol out, I ended up just shooting them all, except for this guy that I axed to death. Back down the zip line to return home and do some big building. Kelvin ran up to me. And did a thumbs up. I haven't seen him do a thumb, thumbs up since like the second week I played. And it's because he's happy. He filled the log, or yeah, the log, the rock holders, and he finished the rock holders. Kelvin has moods. He needs stuff to do to be happy. Getting stuff on the upward zip line was a bit tricky. Simple after a bit of practice, but tricky in the beginning. I was able to get a really good uh, zip line situation going with the tower, just five levels from the top, so there were like 13 levels I didn't have to run up. Really made things move very quickly. I couldn't possibly be satisfied with that though. I was going to have to mess around with it, make it worse, and then fix it again. The place on land that I have my zip line attached to is where I originally had my birdhouses. And it's worth noting that not one of the enemies has ever bothered it. Sometimes Virginia just be running up random, all old yellow leg. What is it, girl? <laughs> she don't know. She smells something funny. I was definitely feeling really cocky about being able to get up and down so quickly. So much so that when I was fixing my zipline situation, I fell down, but then I heard something wrecking my shit. 
and it was this asshole. Anyway, I started blasting. Bah, bah. Lousy damage sponge, breaking my shit. Go to hell. But that's about two and a half hours worth of footage. And I think that is enough for this video.